done with it. That being said, um, these are Sparky and you said Beast. Yep, Sparky Beast. Beast, yep, beast. Yep, beast of course, is going to be going Charizard. Um, I don't know. Yeah, he, he just seems to really, really prefer um, <laughs> going Charizard with Pokemon Trail. Um, right now, both of them are just like playing neutral really patiently. Nobody's really committing to anything too deep right now. I'm just going to get a couple of hits in here and there. And up here into neutral and it's able to catch a jump with another one. Wow. Yeah, Beast is always, like, his Charizard is so much about covering space. So while his com his true combos will end at back throw, back air, or things like that, mm -hmm. uh, neutral air jab, he does uh, such a great job of, like, I'm going to I'm gonna neutral air, and then you're going to air dodge, and I'll hit you with this falling up air. Oh, I'm going to know. I know you're going to jump Whoa. here, and I know you're going to dash in. Oh, Charizard is long. I like the way that he's treating ledge trapping against Greninja because it's it's a very subtle type of conditioning, I think. When he's sitting on top of that platform like that, he's discouraging Sparky to recover high. Right? So he's discouraging him to go with either his side B, we try to recover high with up B, we try to jump back onto the stage. So the next time, I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to go for a uh, low coverage option. Now that he's conditioned him to recover low like this. Yeah, and now you yeah, see him start to finish with his two frame down. Yep. Just a little bit of conditioning every now and again. It's always, it's always a little bit helpful. Sparky instead trying to go for these uh, longer range edge guards, but he's seeing right through that and flare what's in the other side of the stage while he's at it. He starts to push buttons at a disadvantage, man. Like every time you see him it hits stun, he's coming out with some some sort of like attack, whether it be in uh, neutral air most of the time, but sometimes he'll go for up air or back air. And a up smash out of the parry. Both these players space, trying to space each other out. Sparky taking it a little bit slower right now. Mm -hmm. I'm off the stage just to get a little bit of stage control. Um, I would have personally gone for like upfield because I feel like Charizard does have some limited landing options and Greninja juggles pretty decently. Um, so I do inherently kind of disagree with that choice though. That being said, able to finally secure the stuff with a classic down tilt into forward and so quick, so menacing. Heavy oh, sword control a little bit deep, forces the air dodge, but Sparky gets around it with some drift now. Mixing up his drift is going to be super crucial as another out there is going to be what ends up putting uh, putting Beast back at a one stock advantage. Back air, back air, back air, back air, back air, back air, back air. Back air. <laughs> it just doesn't stop. <laughs> What is... Okay, okay. I was worried for that. Okay, so that's actually really smart, but I do think Beast spacing was slightly off. He understood that Greninja, if he was going to land, he would only have enough drift to land at the edge of the stage. And he tried to control all the space there, but he just needs to be a little bit more forward. If he wanted Greninja to... if he wanted to force um, a bad landing from Greninja, he had the right idea. That was a really, really smart way to catch the landing, I think. Um, tries to go for the tech chase, tries to, ooh, go something with a down air there. Um, doesn't find it though. And finally the up smash out of shield, catching that over extension with the dash attack. Wow. Yeah, really, really dominant from Beast, and not in just a sense where he was able to kill at a much earlier percents, or he was able to get more damage out of each opening. What made Beast dominate that game is he made Sparky start to rethink a lot of his more standard options, uh, and you saw you saw a little bit of doubt in a lot of his uh, Sparky's aggressive approaches. Uh, mm -hmm. He would start to land on top of Beast's shield. He you would see him like uh, dash back and forth before committing to a dash attack, which gives which gave uh, Beast more time to react. Uh, a lot of and like you mentioned earlier with the aerial drift and charging these f smashes which were super scary especially since you already died to sparky already died to one in the earlier earlier in that game like it was a lot of like a lot of mental pressure hmm. as we see a character switch duck hunt do you see the duck hunt i feel like this is puffer or stage. Did he switch his character? Or his stage? Hmm. Very interesting. 
Ready? Okay, no, he sticks the Grim Ninja. Yeah, that's fine. Definitely a small league stage would be a little bit easier, um, especially since Greninja could easily alternate between like, okay, am I going to land on stage or am I going to land on the ledge? I feel like a lot of the time his landings were being stuffed up by Charizard, so if I were, and, and honestly, he'd really want to keep it nice and tight, so ideally a stage like Smashville would be really good. Um, but they're actually going to go to Free Town and City, a stage I also agree with, you know, able to really easily get platform extensions on this kind of a stage. But character like Greninja immediately, wow! I didn't even think the dash attack could set up into a tag chase at zero on Town City on Charizard like that. That's actually really surprising. That being said though, already, he's already able to pile on so much damage. Beast with the well up tilt, you don't normally see that coming out from Charizard. But it's a pretty decent anti when you need it though. Yeah, it's it's something that's good in a pinch, starts the combos much better, but when you think of up, usually you see Charizard just up smash instead. But Beast knows how to use every facet of this character more so than most, if not all, other two teammates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I disagree with that shuriken there. Beast was charging F smash towards the ledge, towards off stage. You could have gotten a dash attack there, some a down tilt. Instead, he just mm -hmm. is committing to these shurikens, which, while good, aren't everything as charging one there gets him hit by pivot cancel F2. Good wait for him beast on the platform. Um, I feel like Spike, he could have definitely tried to press his advantage a little bit there, um, but he might've been afraid of like, you know, losing his stock. If he like waited a little bit too long and he lost his invulnerability, he could have like gone back to him back at that point. But, <sighs> wow, Charizard so just so heavy, barely being able to live that. But just that much is gonna just allow Beast to deal on so much more damage. Tries to set up a neutral and doesn't find it from the back throw. These multiple jumps to Charizard. He waits out the air dodge, but Charizard's drift and the slow, the, uh, what is it, Greninja's forward air, a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a, okay, getting the Nair grab even when coming back on the stage. Good awareness from Beast. I feel like Beast Charizard, I don't know how to like, say this, I feel like it's just so smooth. You know, it's very, very fluid. Um, all the like stuff that he goes for, he has such a confident lead behind it, and he's so confident in what he connects. You very, very infrequently see him with an option. You know what, as soon as I say that... Yeah, I mean, if for some, if you're looking to whiff, like, Sparky's glad it was he whiffed on Flare Blitz, that would have been dangerous, but he dies, the rage coming in clutch with that up smash, unsafe with the dash attack, and that should be tough. <laughs> yeah, this is not looking really good for Spooky right now, Beast is in such a high lead, you know, and a fresh stock up right now, he has all the momentum that he needs, um, able to get so many low percent squirrel combos, 43, 52, 52, is all that true? Were those uh, down in no. the too? Not no, wait, the second the downer to downer was not true, but yeah. it worked. It it worked. So. And sometimes that's all you need. Full charge shuriken is gonna make up that damage. But the flare yeah, is the wrong and way. B said, "Yeah, I'm out of there. See ya. Had enough." Place. All right. You know that's a big. We take those moment because he capitalized on the miss input and made uh, made Beast to a little bit sorry for it. Yep. <sighs> that being said, Sparky, I don't know why Beast just flow blitz the other direction. I don't even have an explanation for that. It has to be a misinput. Randomly flow blitzing? Nah. Oh, it's more okay. likely than you think. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that town and city having like super, super like shallow horizontal blast sounds. Uh -huh. He did. He did go up and uh, add. It. He did go on a little bit more of an upwards angle, so the DI was on point, but Charizard F throw, mm -hmm. town and city, like, I'm sorry, you're just dead. Yeah, you're gone, absolutely. Bye-bye. Still, so, we can see, start to see some of the fundamental spark he had, but solo Charizard is a little bit of a different beast, huh? 
I'll see myself. I know you could. I know you can see it, but I go <laughs> my eyes behind my head. I think your eyes I think are now we're... part of your back of your head. Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right, so we have uh, Hydra versus Mockup next, and I have a little bit of tournament news. It's a tournament yeah. news. Yeah, we're we'll here. Um, Mouse Red apparently assumed that winner of semis wouldn't be played on stream, so he went ahead and played game one off stream. Are they going to put a hold on it? Or... Yes. <laughs> so Master Red just won one game. He won one game off stream. <laughs> yeah, I set the way to make uh, to get a snack, and I come back and I see that they had just finished playing the first game of the set of the best of five.